Well, hello. Welcome to the Sanders Review straight from my living room because when you have a three-year-old and a seven-month-old, you film where you can, when you can, about what you can. If you love to read, you know that there are some books that you just love to have in your under-the-bed book box, and there are some books that you want to have out as pieces of art for others to see, maybe ask about, and then maybe be a gateway into them reading your favorite series, right? We all have those books. Today, I want to highlight the 10 books that I own that are my favorite covers. Now, there's obviously many books out there that I wish I had, but a uh, three-year-old, seven-month-old, don't really have the room or the space or honestly the safety to have some amazing book covers just around. Um, so one day, hopefully. And obviously this is completely subjective to my tastes, my interests, and just books that I love these covers of. I would also like to highlight that all of the cover artists, uh, their information is gonna be in the description. So if you're interested in any of these books and the artists, feel free to go check those out. The first book that I want to highlight that is one of my favorite covers is Promise of Blood by Brian McClellan. This book in the Powder Mage trilogy, uh, the book itself is a solid book. It's a take on the fantasy version of the French Revolution following the successful overthrow of the monarchy. It just jumps right into a world and a place that is very realized, and you know that there's a history there as soon as you jump into the pages. So definitely check out the book. Um, it's solid. Um, but the cover is something I just absolutely love um, in this kind of gunpowder mage fantasy setting. Uh, in fact, they, uh, they snort gunpowder um, to be able to imbibe and be able to direct and, uh, and shoot more accurately. So it's a very interesting concept, but the cover itself uh, highlighting one of the main protagonist antagonists can't really go into that because um, that's part of the book but it's uh it's an amazing cover that is just as dynamic and uh graphic and colorful as all get out i mean if all covers were like this you couldn't choose your favorite book the next book that i want to highlight is also an amazing read that you have to read several times because it's that good is kings of the wild this book uh, the author, Nicholas Eames, right? Yes, Nicholas Eames. Uh, he wrote this book after reading several books about the metal bands of the 70s into the 80s. And it reads like a band, a mercenary band, that has to rejoin or re-come together for one final tour to save one of their daughters. Um, it's as if you took a D&D &D campaign and the culture of the 70s, 80s rock metal era and created a story around that. It is a very fun read, a little predictable at times, but it's a very fun. If you've played D&D or any, any game like that, uh, or Skyrim, you kind of know how that feels, but the cover itself is just absolutely amazing. Once you read this book, you understand the characters, and this is just a great book as a conversation starter. Kings of the Wild, recommend the book definitely, cover even more so. Next up, oh, what do we have here? The subscribe button. I don't mind if you do. <laughs> uh, third book I want to highlight is by Brandon Sanderson from his recent uh, campaign Kickstarter that he did oh, oh, a year and a half ago now. This is my favorite cover from it and almost one of my favorite covers from any of Brandon Sanderson's books and that is Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. Let me get it in the light there so you can see a little bit of the vibrancy of it. This definitely highlights kind of that Japanese almost anime style. Um, the artwork in here, I'll show a few pictures of it, is very beautifully done. Uh, when Brandon Sanderson did his secret project that brought out like 50 million dollars in subscriptions, uh, my wife actually let me get it as a, uh, as a birthday present to myself. Uh, which was actually really cool because of the cost and everything. So I was very happy to get that book. Amazing book. De not the best book, but definitely up there for some of Brandon Sanderson's books. But the art in this is just fantastic and absolutely incredible. Yeah. Book number four I want to highlight, and these are in no particular order, is a book called A Hero Born by Jin Yong. This is a book that is translated to English. It is one of the most best-selling fantasy books of all time, and very few Westerners have even heard about it. And it is an amazing book. It reads as if you took the fantasy version of China during the time of Genghis Khan's invasions, and you took that 
in a style of fantasy that is reminiscent of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. The book is very interesting to read, and the cover art I just think is absolutely incredible. I love it. You take something like the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you take any other books that are set kind of in East Asia and uh, compared to this cover, and I think this one stands up for it. One of my favorite book series, period, is The Greenbone Saga by Fonda Lee, and I think this cover actually even bypasses some of those. Um, so yeah, definitely recommend this for a piece. It actually has a little customization from my son, which makes this even more special. Getting out of the realm of fantasy, uh, this first one in sci-fi is, the book itself is, it's a good read. It's kind of on the YA into adult uh, sci-fi, but the cover itself is just so vibrant and contrasting, and that is Scythe. Uh, this is a very interesting kind of, it's not post-apocalyptic, but it's definitely a utopian, dystopian future where there's the cloud AI that controls all life, weather, food, everything, and people are living to be hundreds and thousands of years old and to curb overpopulation. Some people are scythes and they have to go around and meet a quota of just killing people throughout the year. And it's a very interesting kind of, it's giver meets uh, meets a few other kind of those dystopian, utopian futures. And it's a very interesting read, but the cover, the contrast, I think is beautiful, highlighting the themes of the book. Um, so definitely recommend it. It's a, it's a solid series. You want to probably at least try. If you don't like it, pass it up. But definitely interesting cover. Continuing in the sci-fi vein, uh, Christopher Paolini, To Sleep in the Sea of Stars. This cover is just so ethereal. It reminds you almost of the, uh, uh, the, the luminescent plankton in the ocean. Uh, you see pictures and videos of that. It reminds me of that look. And this is supposed to be uh, obviously in space. Uh, whether it's a galaxy, I can't fully remember. So the story itself is kind of a first contact story um, with a xenoarchaeologist who uh, gets, all I'll say is they get a symbiotic suit that is very uh, venomish. I'll, that's all I will say. But the cover itself is just fantastic. I believe he has a sequel that he is writing at some point here. Um, if you read his Aragon series, you know he's a good writer. Knocks out of park with this book. I would say it's probably 100 pages too long, in my opinion. It's, it's a thickum book that just kind of drags at times, but it has a lot of really interesting scientific takes on faster than life travel and all that. So definitely recommend the book if you like sci-fi. And the cover is just beautiful. Book number six is from Joe Abercrombie, his Age of Madness series, and I love the cover of A Little Hatred. This book and this series, if you've read Joe Abercrombie, you know his grimdark take on fantasy. It's more real world political, kind of reminds you of Game of Thrones. Um, maybe not to that extent, but it's very much there, the First Law Trilogy. This is the sequel to the First Law Trilogy. And this book takes off, it's a fantasy world that is on the brink of industrialization with all the social, cultural, political, uh, religious strains that that puts on it. And as a history teacher, there's themes in here that I absolutely think are amazing uh, that I definitely recognize that I teach my students. But the cover itself, uh, highlighting that bridge of the fantasy into the industrial, uh, I just absolutely love this. Uh, I love some of the other books in this series, but I think this is honestly probably one of my favorite book covers that I own. Obviously, it's in this video. So, uh, next up, book number eight is from probably my favorite fantasy series of all time. That'll come in a video at some point. And that is the last book of The Wheel of Time, A Memory of Light. I just think this cover is epic. Doesn't match up with the story story perfectly. If you've read the story, you know what I mean. But Randall Thor with Colander there um, is just an epic, epic cover. And this book is absolutely amazing. I mean, about this much of the book is just one battle, basically. <laughs> uh, and it's an amazing book. The audiobook is even amazing as well. But the cover, I just love this on, uh, on display. Um, I'll periodically switch my books around to have a new book on display in my little corner library area. And this is one of my favorite book covers to reveal and to show. It's one of my favorite book series of all time. Sorry for the glare. And yeah, check it out. But it's an amazing book cover. I wish I had more hardcover books. Uh, just in terms of price, uh, they're just so big as well. It's really hard to, to justify storing them. But I uh, absolutely love the books that I do have. <clears throat> book number nine from Evan Winter, his second book in the burning, uh, I think it's Quatrain, it's four books long. Uh, the third book's coming out soon, but this is The Fires of Vengeance by Evan Winters. Uh, I love the first cover, but this second one, uh, just with the African-style mask of the dragon with the marble 
uh, ivory statues and everything. It just the it just screams African culture and fantasy, and I absolutely love this. Evan Winters writing this book for uh, his son, who when he wrote his started writing this series. Uh, he wrote this series because there weren't a lot of books that highlighted African mythology and culture, and so he definitely highlights that well in this book. It doesn't have its, uh, it has its flaws, but the series itself is just really interesting and really amazing, and it's an amazing story of him because he started off independently publishing it. It took off so much that he was then able to do, and he actually had this a recent Kickstarter with a beautiful book with art that I wanted to get so bad, I just couldn't justify the cost of it at this time. Uh, unfortunately. So at some point, I'll probably be doing a review of these books uh, just for me and for anybody who's interested, but beautiful cover art. Absolutely recommend the series, but the cover art's just amazing. And the last book that I want to highlight that I own, that I love the covers, obviously there's many other books that I love their covers of, but by John Gwynn, arguably one of the best uh, book covers that I think is in existence out there, um, obviously, this is very biased, very subjective, but I just love the epicness of this book. It is the second book, <coughs> excuse me, it is the second book in the Bloodsworn Saga, and that is The Hunger of the Gods. This series takes Norse mythology in a direction that you really don't see it taken. Uh, you ha follow a multi-perspective story following a world where the gods who are shapeshifters into these creatures out of mythology, here obviously being Fenrir, uh, is just absolutely incredible. The third book's coming out very soon. The cover looks amazing as well, but I think even over that, I don't know, it's an amazing cover too. I think it'll be tied for this, but right now this is just, in terms of epic scope, uh, the first book has a really amazing cover of a dragon. Uh, it looks really cool, but I just think for just epic fantasy mythology, this just is an amazing book cover. And you put this out, and I think this is one of the most eye-catching book covers that you can have at all, period. So those are the 10 books that I wanted to highlight that I own. Obviously, there's many other books that I wish that I owned or had space or room or money for. Uh, eventually, I want to do a small video highlighting some of the books that... I don't think we're successful, at least that I own. Uh, some of the more modern books that the covers just don't really cut it, I think. Uh, if you like what we kind of been talking about here, kind of in a similar vein, uh, my wife and I, we actually went and did a little mini book haul. So if you're interested in that, that link is going to be up here uh, to be able to meet my wife. She's amazing, even more amazing than me. Who knew? Um, and as well as if you're interested in some of these books, some of my opinions on books, one of my favorite books of all time uh, is uh, by is in the Discord se World series, and I want to show you Moving Pictures, which is an amazing take on the age of the silver screen and cinema. So hope you have a wonderful day. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. God bless. We'll talk to you later.